Welcome to the Deep Dive, your shortcut to expertise. Today, we're diving into something pretty amazing in medicine, endoscopy. Think about it, a flexible uh, pencil-thin camera, guiding doctors inside you, letting them see, diagnose, even treat things without major surgery. It's quite something. Let's unpack it. Yeah, absolutely. And that unpacking, that's really why we're here. We're drawing heavily today from some fantastic resources, especially inspired by Dr. Raju's instructional videos. You know, those materials are designed for folks learning the ropes and endoscopy techs, nurses. So we want this to be a kind of shortcut for you to really grasp the whole workflow. Okay, so our mission today, we're going to follow a hypothetical patient. Let's call them GSR. We'll track their journey right through the endoscopy process. We'll look at what each team member does and crucially those safety steps, the essential ones. Right. It's not just what happens, but how it happens. The choreography. Think yeah. of it like a, um, a really high stakes guided tour. Science, tech teamwork, all moving together. A guided tour. I like that. So where does this tour actually begin? It's not in the procedure room itself, is it? No, not at all. It starts way earlier. Think of it as passing through safety gates. The first one, right at the front desk. Okay, at the front desk. What happens there? It sounds basic, but it's fundamental. The receptionist confirms GSR's identity. Name, date of birth, medical record number, triple check. Seems simple, right? But that redundancy prevents huge errors like wrong patient, wrong procedure. It's the bedrock. Got it. So identity confirmed, gate one cleared, then GSR moves to a prep area. Exactly. And here the nurse steps in. This is where the detailed clinical prep starts. They go through the health history, super important, any current meds, especially blood thinners, that's critical, and allergies, of course. Okay. History, meds, allergies, all checked. And this is where the IV gets started too. Yep. That's the access point for fluids and, you know, for the medications they'll need later for comfort and sedation. Right. Now, things shift a bit here, don't they? The physicians get involved. They do. GSR meets two key doctors now. First, the endoscopist. Their job is to explain the indication. That's the why. Why is this specific test needed? Is it reflux? Bleeding signs? Unexplained symptoms? GSR needs to clearly understand what question this procedure aims to answer. Okay, the why is clear. Then the second physician, that's the anesthesiologist, or sometimes a CRNA. Correct. A CRNA is a certified registered nurse anesthetist, mm. highly skilled. Their focus is comfort and safety during the procedure. This is often what patients worry most about. They explain how they'll monitor everything, heart, breathing, oxygen levels, second by second. And they talk about the sedation or anesthesia plan. And all this discussion leads to informed consent. It's not just signing a form, is it? Absolutely not. Informed consent is a dialogue. It means GSR truly understands, understands the benefits, sure, but also the risks and any alternatives. Only then can they agree to proceed. You mentioned risks. For something like endoscopy, what are the key risks that absolutely have to be covered in that consent discussion? Good question. While serious complications are rare, the main ones are bleeding, particularly if they plan to take biopsies or remove polyps, you know, do therapeutic work. And the other big one is perforation, a tear in the wall of the GI tract. That's the most serious potential issue. And of course, the anesthesia team covers their specific risks too. GSR has to verbally confirm they get it benefits, risks, options before that second safety gate really opens. Okay, so consent is given, GSR understands the plan, now they move into the endoscopy suite itself. Describe that scene. Right, it often looks like a smaller, more specialized operating room. Bright lights, multiple monitors displaying vitals in the camera feed. You'll see the equipment tower that holds the light source, the camera processor, suction, insufflation, all the core tech. And before anything actually starts, there's another critical pause, right? The timeout. Yeah. Yes. The timeout. This is non-negotiable, mandatory. Mm. The entire team nurse, tech, endoscopist, anesthesia professional sops. They verbally confirm one last time, correct patient, correct procedure, correct side if relevant, all needed equipment ready. Everyone agrees. It's that final deliberate pause designed to catch any potential error right before starting. That final check makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay, time out, complete, the team's ready. Let's talk roles in motion. Who's doing what? Start with anesthesia. Okay, the anesthesiologist or CRNA, they're managing the sedation or anesthesia, usually through that IV line. They adjust the medication dose based on how GSR is responding, making sure they're comfortable but safe. And they are glued to the monitors showing vital signs, heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, oxygen levels, sometimes even CO2 levels or temperature. Crucially, they have to be ready for anything. If breathing becomes an issue, maybe due to the sedation or the procedure itself, they prepare to immediately step in. 
potentially even placing a breathing tube, intubating to secure the airway. That's the ultimate safety net. Constant vigilance. Okay, what about the endoscopist, the one driving the scope? You called them the pilot earlier. Right, the pilot. They're using controls on the handle of the endoscope to steer the tip. It takes a lot of dexterity. But it's not just steering. They're also managing the view. They use buttons to gently inflate the area with air or carbon dioxide or sometimes flush with water to open up the space. And they suction out fluid or debris to keep the view clear. You need that distension to see behind folds in the lining. While doing all this, they're looking for abnormalities, recognizing patterns normal versus potentially problematic tissue. And if needed, they pass tiny instruments through channels in the scope to take biopsies or perform treatments like removing a polyp. Complex maneuvering. And the nurse, they're not just handing instruments, are they? Oh, much more than that. The nurse is like the mission coordinator and a safety officer. They manage the overall flow in the ream, anticipate needs, maybe position the patient. They handle the critical real-time documentation, what drugs were given when, procedure start-stop times, what the doctor observes, and a huge responsibility specimen handling. If biopsies are taken, the nurse meticulously labels each sample container. Getting that wrong mislabeling could lead to a terrible outcome down the line, misdiagnosis, wrong treatment. So they ensure every sample is correct, logged, and secure. Then they coordinate the smooth handoff to the recovery area after the procedure. Okay, coordinator and documenter. Now let's focus on a role that's key for our audience, the mm. endoscopy technician. You called them the systems engineer. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If the endoscopist is the pilot, the tech is the flight engineer and ground crew rolled into one. Their technical skill is essential and their job starts way before the patient even enters the room. They have to inspect the endoscope thoroughly. Is the insertion tube smooth? No damage. Is the lens crystal clear? They test the light source, the camera, the suction, the air water channels. Everything has to function perfectly. A blurry image or weak suction compromises the whole exam. So they ensure the equipment is ready. What about during the procedure itself? During the case, they're managing the tech environment, setting up the room, ensuring connections between the scope, camera, light source, and monitors are solid. They prepare all the tiny accessories the doctor might need, biopsy forceps, snares for polyp removal, injection needles. These things are incredibly fine. And crucially, they're the immediate troubleshooter. Troubleshooter? Like what, yeah. what goes wrong? Well, say the doctor's trying to pass a tool through the scope channel, but it gets clogged with uh, mucus or something. The tech has to quickly figure out how to clear that blockage, maybe flush it or provide an alternative tool. Or maybe the image on the screen suddenly goes fuzzy or flickers. Is it uh, the camera head? A loose cable. The light bulb failing. The tech needs to diagnose and fix that technical glitch fast right there to keep the procedure moving safely and efficiently. Time under anesthesia is valuable. So they're hands-on problem solving. You also mentioned they stand right there watching the screen with the doctor. How does that add to safety? Isn't there a hierarchy? There is, but good teamwork transcends rigid hierarchy in critical moments. The tech isn't just passively watching. Because they are focused solely on the visual feed and the equipment, they often function as a second set of eyes for the endoscopist. They anticipate the next move. And yes, this is key. If they see something potentially concerning, maybe a small polyp the doctor seemed to pass by quickly, perhaps during a tricky part of navigation, they are empowered and frankly expected in a good team to speak up. Respectfully, of course. So how would that sound like? Uh... It might be something quiet, professional, like, doctor, excuse me, could we perhaps take another look back at the proximal flexure area? Mm -hmm. Just a gentle prompt. That kind of respectful challenge, that cross-check, mm -hmm. is an incredibly important safety layer against, you know, human factors like distraction or momentary oversight. Okay. A culture that supports that is vital. A second set of eyes with technical expertise. Okay. And the text job isn't done when the scope comes out, right? There's the whole cleaning aspect. Oh, absolutely critical. That pivot to reprocessing is arguably one of their most vital roles for the next patient's safety. This is Infection Control 101, but it's incredibly rigorous. It's not just a quick wipe down. It starts immediately with bedside cleaning, then manual cleaning in a reprocessing area, meticulous scrubbing, brushing all the internal channels to remove debris. Then comes high-level disinfection, usually soaking the scope in potent chemical disinfectants like glutaraldehyde or parasitic acid. The concentration, temperature, and soak time have to be precisely monitored to kill tough microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi. Every single channel must be flushed and soaked correctly. Strict adherence to these multi-step protocols is non-negotiable. It prevents cross-contamination between patients. Wow, that sounds intense. Okay, so scope is out being reprocessed. GSR, our patient, is heading to recovery. Correct. Into the recovery area, 
where the nursing staff and often the anesthesia team continue close monitoring. They're watching as the sedation wears off, checking vitals, making sure the patient is comfortable and waking up smoothly. Many people are pretty alert within maybe half an hour or so, but the team makes sure they're stable before moving to the next step. And once GSR is awake enough... Then the endoscopist usually comes back to talk with them. This is really important. They explain what they saw during the procedure. Often they'll show pictures taken with the scope. Did everything look normal? Were polyps found and removed? Were biopsies taken? And they set expectations, especially clarifying when biopsy results will be ready, because that usually takes a few days, which can be an anxious wait. Clear communication. And then the final instructions before going home. Yeah. The anesthesia professional reviews specific post-sedation instructions. Big one. No driving for the rest of the day. Reaction times are still impaired. Also, when it's okay to start drinking fluids, then eating normally. The recovery nurse reinforces all this, removes the IV, and goes over written discharge instructions, making sure GSR or whoever is accompanying them understands everything, what to watch for, who to call if there are any problems. Okay, so looking back at this whole journey, this whole guided tour, it's clear that endoscopy being so technical and time sensitive really hinges on teamwork and uh, multiple safety nets. That's exactly it. Redundant safety systems. It's not about one person being perfect. It's about having multiple layers designed to catch potential problems. Think about the layers we traced, those initial ID checks. Right, the formal timeout before starting. The careful specimen labeling by the nurse, yeah. the readiness of the anesthesia team for emergencies. The technician's vigilance and troubleshooting. And that meticulous reprocessing cycle. All these steps overlap. When everyone executes their role precisely, consistently, you get reliable equipment, clear views, effective treatment, and just a much safer, calmer experience for the patient. Teamwork is the safety system here. So a fantastic deep dive. We saw how endoscopy uses that camera for inspection and treatment. We met the key players, the pilot endoscopist, the coordinator nurse, the systems engineer technician, and the vigilant anesthesia expert. And it's all underpinned by those layered safety checks. Right, exactly. And maybe a final thought for you listening to this. This whole system, the preparation, the communication, the constant double checking, the teamwork. It's a model that works way beyond medicine. Think about how these high stakes systems keep people safe. It touches on engineering, psychology, team dynamics. So here's a little challenge. Where else in your life or your work, maybe you're coding software, managing a complex project, even planning a big event, where could you apply that principle of the mandatory timeout? that deliberate pause where everyone confirms readiness and alignment just to catch a mistake before it happens. Something to think about.